Okay guys, let's take a look at number 21. Just on site, it's looking like I'm going to have a table problem because I can see all of uh, the cells in there for the tables. So let's see what we got. Felipe surveyed students at his school. He found that 82 students own a cell phone and 57 of those students own an MP3 player. All right, there are 13 students that do not own a cell phone but own an MP3 player. Nine students do not own either device. Construct a two-way table that summarizes this data. All right, so let's start with, I'm gonna start with the, the neither. I like to start with the neither and then potentially the both if I can. So it says here nine students do not own either device. So if they don't e own either, that means they do not own an MP3 player and they do not own a cell phone. And where that row and that column, or I should say that row and that column, if I pointed it that way, that row and that column overlap right here in this cell. So that's got to be nine, okay? And again, for me personally, I like looking at the both and the neither. So if I go up here, it says he found that 82 students own a cell phone and of those, so I wanna emphasize that we're seeing the word of again, that's that conditional phrase that we always find. So of these 82, 57 also own an MP3 player. So if I'm looking through that, I know that 57 own both but 82 in total own a cell phone. So that's how I can start to piece those two together, right? So 82 own a cell phone, and of these 82, 57 own an MP3 player. All right, and then we can start to fill in the rest. It says there are 13 students that do not own a cell phone, but own an MP3 player. So in terms of this cell phone, they'd be down on this row, Right, but they own the MP3 player, so they'd be in this column and there's got to be 13 of them. At this point, I have enough information to fill all of this in. So let me just start totaling these out. Uh, 57 plus 13 is 70. I'm not sure what that totals out to, that's fine. 13 plus nine is gonna be 22. All right, and then 82 and 22 is 104. I'm gonna have to use a little bit of subtraction to find one of these two numbers. I'm just gonna find this, this number here, the folks that own a cell phone, but don't own an MP3 player. I'm gonna subtract 57 from 82. So let's see what we got. If I do 82 minus 57, we are looking at about 25 folks. All right. 25 plus nine is gonna get me to 34. And I always think it's a good idea just to do a quick check. Did these totals and these totals both equal 104? So if we do 70 plus 34, that was 104, great. And 82 plus 22 is also 104. I like to just check that my sample sizes are working because I just there's so many times I made a little typo and it, it's good to just have a check in there. All right, so what is the probability that a student owns an MP3 player or a cell phone? So as I look at that, I see the or popping up, okay? And so then I think formula, formula one, I'm allowed to use formula one. So let me go ahead and write down formula one. We have the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of their overlap. All right. So for this particular problem, I'm gonna make um, A, I'm just gonna write that as MP3. And for B, I'm gonna swap that out with cell phone. So I'll have, I'll just use M for MP3, or I'll just actually write MP3, but I'm gonna use C for cell phone. So let me go swap these out, right? So it's gonna be MP3 or C. MP3, C, MP3, C. So let me go write this with the letters of our particular problem. So everywhere I see an A, and I'm gonna to have to squeeze this in, I'm gonna write MP3. Actually, as I start to write it, it's a little too cramped, so I'm just gonna rewrite the entire equation with the letters that we're, we're working with. So let me rewrite formula one with the letters for our particular problem. So we have the probability of MP3 or cell would equal the probability that someone owns an MP3 plus the probability that someone owns a cell minus their overlap. 
All right, so let's figure out what this is. And, and we've said it before, but it's always good to repeat it. Anytime you have these probabilities and you're dealing with a table, your denominator is going to be this number in the bottom right hand corner of your table, with the exception of a conditional probability. And when you have the conditional probability, there's some denominators canceling, but, but that's just not the case here. So let's try and figure out these numbers. The likelihood that I talked to somebody who owned an MP3 player. Well, if we look at it, we've got 70 folks in total owning an MP3 player out of my 104. Okay. I want to add to that all of the cell phone users. So the cell phone users are over in this row, right? There's 82 of them. And that's also out of 104. Okay. And you can see in counting this column of MP3 players and this row of cell phone players, you can actually see I've counted these 57 folks twice because they got counted in the column and in the row. So I'm going to subtract out that overlap, right? Where do the column and the row overlap? They, they overlap right there at 57. And my denominator is going to be 104. And then we're going to go ahead and on our calculators, or you can just add these numerators and or add and subtract these numerators if you want, because you already have common denominators. But let's just do this whole thing on our calculators so you can see what that would look like. So I have here 70 out of 104 plus 82 out of 104 minus 57 out of 104. And my calculator is going to give me a decimal, which is fine. And then I can hit math. Oops, you can't quite see what button I'm hitting. Let me go back to my home screen. I can hit math, turn it into a fraction just by hitting enter, and my calculator will tell me, hey, that was 95 out of 104. Or you can just leave it as the decimal. Both answers are totally acceptable. All right, so we've got 95 out of 104, which is basically saying 91%. So there's a 91% chance that if I um, look at a student from this survey, they've got either an MP3 player or a cell phone. Keeping in mind that in the, in the stats world, when you say one or the other, it could be just one, just the other, or both, okay? All right, so now let's, let's scooch this up and we're gonna take this table and map it onto a Venn diagram. So let me get the table right there at the top. We can almost see the Venn diagram in there with the table. So I'll leave it right there. I think we can see, just see both um, in, our, in our window. All right, so it says construct a Venn diagram that it displays event C owns a cell phone and M owns an MP3 player. So let me put cell here and M here. Okay. And when it comes to transferring your data from a table to an MP3 player, You'll notice there's the four main numbers in here, right? Ignore the totals. Don't worry about those. Anybody can count, calculate totals. But let's look at the 57, 25, 13, and 9, the four main numbers in here. There are also four areas in any Venn diagram. There's the left moon, the football, the right moon, and then just the outside universe. So these four areas have to be attached to one of these four numbers. There's a one-to-one -one mapping. So let's see if we can figure this out. If I put my pencil in the middle here, that would represent students who own cell phone players and MP3 players. So which students do both? And if we look, for students that own an MP3 player and own a cell phone, there are 57 of them. Okay. If I put my pencil here in the left moon, this left moon represents students who own a cell phone but specifically do not own an MP3 player. So I want to look for students that own a cell phone, they're in this top row, but they do not own an MP3 player, so they're over in this column. So that would be these 25 students. Okay. If I look at the right moon, all right, right moon here, these are the students that own an MP3 player, but specifically do not own a cell phone. All right, so students that own an MP3 player, they're in this column, but they do not own a cell phone, they're in this row, so there are 13 of them, okay? And last but not least, the people that are out here in the universe, they do not own a cell phone, nor do they own an MP3 player. These are the neithers. And the neithers, we had the number nine. I typically, I'm gonna scooch this up. I usually write the number nine just in that bottom right-hand area. You don't have to. If you wanna 
Hey, be brave. You can write it over in the left hand, top right, wherever you want to write it. But I just want to see it in there, okay? So we've got our Venn diagram, fantastic. Now let's take a look at what part C is asking us to do. Keep in mind, when you're talking about um, doing the calculations in part C, you can use your Venn or your tree, whatever you're more comfortable with. We have both options available to us now. All right, so going through this, it says, given a student owns an MP3 player, what is the probability that a per this person also owns a cell phone? So given a student owns an MP3 player, what is the person that, what is the probability, excuse me, that a person also owns a cell phone? So I see probability, right? Meaning my answer will be a number between zero and one. Yeah, but I see the word given. I hope we're kind of hearing that stand out, given. So I've got a conditional probability, which means I'm gonna use formula number two. All right, so we're allowed to use formula number two whenever we want. So I'm gonna say, well, I know the probability of A given B equals the probability of A and B over the probability of B. And again, I'm gonna erase these letters in a moment and put in the letters for my particular problem. So we've got, given that a student owns an MP3 player, what's the probability that they also own a cell phone? The condition always goes after the vertical bar. So this, I'm gonna swap out with letter M because that's what we picked for our Venn diagram. And then what is the probability they also own a cell phone? So I'm gonna put a C right here. So this is gonna be the probability of C given M. And then I'm gonna have C and M here and just M down in the denominator. So I'm gonna rewrite this formula with the letters for my particular problem. Okay, so with that, I think I'll opt, since it's closest to me, I'll opt to use the Venn diagram in this problem. All right, so taking a look at this, we've got the probability of C and M. That's our first task that we're looking at. Now, when I wanna talk about an and, and we're looking at a Venn diagram, I'm talking about the football. So I need 57, right? That's my numerator. Now, keep in mind, I had a total of 104 students. And if you're forgetting where that number comes from, add up these four, four numbers, right? So if we did 25 plus 57 plus 13 plus nine, there are 104 students in total here. So I just wanna remind us that there were 104 students that were in this survey. All right, so getting back to the probability of C and M. I want the football, so we got 57 out of 104. That is my numerator, okay? Now this is what's the probability of M. I'm gonna put the most common error I see. All right, so I get this every semester. I'll, I'll see that students will write, well, that was 13 out of 104. The probability of an MP3 player, 13 out of 104. If you're telling me 13 out of 104, you're only looking at this right moon. And this right moon does not encapsulate all of the students who owned an MP3 player. It's the entire circle. So we have to re remember that if I want letter M, right, if I want that M, it's not a moon, it's an entire circle. So really, if you look at it, there were 70 students, and I'm getting 70 because 57 plus 13 is 70. So I need to erase this 13 and put 70 there. Actually, that doesn't look super clear. Let me write 70 out of 104. And again, if you're, you're missing where I got the 70, I'm doing 57 plus 13, okay? So the entire circle is what I'm dealing with there. Now, after I get those, you can start to see we're in a situation where I'm gonna multiply by a reciprocal. So I'll have 57 out of 104 times 104 out of 70. Those denominators will cancel out and that leaves me with 57 out of 70. And let's see what, what kind of decimal am I working with? 57 out of 70 looks like it is about 81%. All right, 
So there's my answer on that one. Now, you, you could have just as easily, just as easily, excuse me, you could have used the table to solve this. So in this particular problem, find the method that you're more comfortable with and use it. But also review the method that you're less comfortable with just so you can practice it. All right, one more to go.